the central idea of the new behavioral law and economics, and, and again, apparently, one of the things that the new administration is, uh, finds very appealing as kind of a third way uh, is to try to analyze legal strategies that do take bounded rationality into account. So they do get, take into account that people don't behave as perfectly rationally actors in the spirit of traditional economics, uh, but at the same time do this without restricting individual choice. It's becoming more and more accepted that the assumptions of human rationality that traditional economics has made may sometimes be true, but other times may not be true. And in behavioral law and economics, we, we use the term bounded rationality to describe this. People are not irrational, but they're also not hyper-rational in the way that traditional economics has often assumed. Just to give a, a, a one sense example for now, we'll be doing many more examples in the talk, uh, a traditional economics person would assume that if you gave someone a relevant piece of information, say about the risk of a certain product, the person would um, apply that information correctly to his or her own decision, would assume that the information applied to him or her and would alter his or her behavior rationally in response. And that's the type of thing that uh, behavioral economics has come to question. Behavioral law and economics tries to take a behavioral economics approach using economics but with bounded rationality and use that to analyze law, figure out how laws will work, whether laws are good or bad, and that sort of thing. I'm going to use an example uh, from the retirement saving context, just because that's a nice way to compare with the nudge approach. So uh, if we think about an optimistically biased employee who's trying to decide how much to save for retirement, a worry I have is that people uh, may undersave because they, they think it'll be fine for them in retirement. So it, if we wanted to put a variable on it, we could say the true risk of their standard of living falling significantly in retirement is x, given their current level of saving. But they think it's only 0.3x, because they're optimistically biased. Now this is, is sort of the, the, the main point I want to make in this lecture. When people are making an error of fact like that, they're misestimating a number. Um, then they are undersaving relative to their own underlying preferences about consumption versus saving. So they're mistaken about a fact, and as a result, they make a judgment that fails to, to um, maximize their own personal values, whatever those may be. We may have a person who cares very little about saving, and even if the estimate was corrected to x, the person still wouldn't save very much. That's fine on this approach. So on this approach, we just care that people get the X right. And then whatever their personal values about mostly saving or mostly enjoying today and not saving for the future, are, are, we're fine either way. We're respecting their preferences about when saving. When I think about what behavioral economics can contribute, I feel like behavioral economics can contribute so much more when we focus on correcting the misestimation because we're not getting bogged down in, in a normative debate about what preferences people should have. And instead, we're, we're trying to use all of the tools of social science to get people to have the best understanding feasible of the facts relevant to their decision.